Current time is now 7.28 p.m. here in Seoul, South Korea. It is time for Made in Korea, our history lesson time with Mr. Knicks aren't going to be a competition against the Sixers. The Sixers have Embiid back, and so they're going to win the first round is Professor John DeMoya from Seoul National University. Hello, Professor. Hello, thank you very much. <laughs> and I have, I have nothing further to say on the matter. I've been waiting <laughs> days. All right, they're up 2-0, yes. They're, 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 I was waiting days. I'm talking about, you know, the Sixers, you know, falling out. And, uh, you know, now we are up uh, two, two games to nothing. Uh, but uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good series. It was a very oh, good yeah, series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he's not going to respond any more to this. Uh, we'll, we'll... I, I will only say um, Boston awaits you. Oh. <laughs> but nobody likes Boston. No, I don't either. I, that's true. I'd rather actually see the Knicks. But anyway, yeah. Uh, let's talk about another anniversary that uh, we're going to be marking tomorrow. Uh, 76th anniversary of the Korean election in 1948. The very first uh, in the country. What happened in the 1948 elections? Why was it also very controversial and uh, potentially divisive? Uh what were some of the issues and controversies and who were the major figures involved? We are going to be answering those questions today. But, uh, Professor, let's first and foremost, uh, we're talking about 1948. Right. And uh, this is when uh, Korea has been liberated from uh, Japan's colonial rule. Yes. And after that, I mean, there was a lot of events happening, right? Uh, we got yes. a number of countries kind of like meddling in the situation right now. Any number of actors who think they have an interest in what goes on in the peninsula. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is also uh, about two years before the Korean War uh, uh, launches. Yes, uh, they could not have known at the time, but you are correct. Right, they could not have known at the time. But uh, yeah. what we know now is it's been uh, two years before this. But who? sponsored the elections uh, in the run-up to May 1948 to May 10th, 1948. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, given the circumstances on the peninsula where you basically have an ongoing Soviet occupation in the north, and the which we've talked about previously, the American or USAMGAK occupation in the south, right. technically this is being sponsored by the United Nations, and I guess it's even more specifically um, the United Nations Temporary Commission on Korea. Um, and then, obviously, uh, because, as we'll talk in a moment, it actually only plays out in the South for a variety of political reasons, then it's under the auspices of uh, the American military government. But really, it's it's the UN elections. Um, the two Koreas have been under these occupation zones, which were supposed to be temporary. Right, right. And the idea is that there will be, and this is what's critical for South Koreans to remember, it was supposed to be a peninsula-wide election for a constitutional assembly. As we will talk, this does not happen. No. Nope. No. It, it does not. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one thing that we learned also in our previous uh, segment is that uh, South Korea, North Korea, it was split up even before uh, the war in itself. Yeah. Uh, they technically declare independence each shortly after this, uh, August uh, 48 for the South, September 48 for the North. And this election turns out to be one of the issues that probably led to increases the divide yeah. and leads to what happened. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's go into uh, why North Korea decided to refuse to participate in this election and we talked about the effect of this, but mm -hmm. let's go into other effects of uh, them not participating in this yeah. election. This is supposed to be an elections uh, leading to a constitutional assembly, which later takes the form of the South Korean National Assembly. Um, you don't see a lot of talk about why the North doesn't participate, but we can speculate mm -hmm. uh, fears of with the population distribution, presumably more votes or more power going to the southern region. Something along the lines of if we participate in this, we're legitimately legitimating the potential loss of our power and presumably the autonomy that the North wants to have. Right. So the w most historical accounts say basically the Russians and or the North Koreans in combination just tell the UN electors flat out, you do not have permission to enter across the 38th. Yeah. So that, I don't even know if they said formally we won't participate, but if the electors can't come and monitor, by by in essence, de facto, they're saying we don't want anything to do with this. Yeah, and remember, uh, going into... You know, after, shortly after the liberation of the Korean Peninsula, starts this this rift between the two sides, mm -hmm. where again the North wants to kind of push forth the Communist Party, right? We have to be a communist state. We have to be a communist country. We love what uh, the Soviet has taught us. Where largely in the South, they're going absolutely not. 
Uh, there's a lot of flaws, and there's been there was clashes, sure, uh, and you know sure, there were sure. signs that there was going to be some sort of civil war that was going to come. Now, no one knew that it was going to be this big a Korean right. war, and so the fear is legitimate, right? To, to participate yeah, in this, and, could, and these fears extended, as we'll talk in a moment too, to the south too, where there were people in the south who said, if you hold this election the way it's set up, yeah. this is going to create a a bigger divide. Absolutely. Let's talk about a gentleman by the name of Cho Man Sik. Who yes. is Cho Man Sik and what happened to him? Yeah, um, we don't know exactly, but we can speculate and he fits in here beautifully. Sure, sure. He is widely known, or what I learned about him as a grad student, he was sometimes referred to in the 20s and 30s as the Korean Gandhi because he had kind of a certain look. But more importantly, why the Gandhi analogy is he promoted in the colonial period, uh, Korea first products, uh, let's have our own kind of products to push back for economic independence against the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Why he's critical for this period is he is, like several other actors, one of the few voices to say, let's continue to talk to the North. Uh, let's keep this conversation open. He does go North. He, and this is where I said, I, we don't know for sure, but at some point after 45, he probably gets detained or pushed into a North Korean uh prison type situation and then he basically will disappear between 48 and the beginning of the korean war where most accounts will say that he was probably killed or purged in the sense that he is one of the people that lingered too long <laughs> and tried to keep the dialogue open and probably paid with his life for for doing that you're talking about a pacifist who is trying to um, create dialogue between the yeah two. but other, others were doing this too what i'll say is um uh, kim gu who we've talked about previously right, 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 right. and kim gu shik I don't know how close to the 40 election, but they made a trip to the north to talk to Kim Il-sung to try to keep this dialogue open and were accused widely of being uh, communist appeasers. Mm -hmm. So Cho man is not, he's not the only one doing this. There are people who definitely are still crossing, uh, dialoguing with northern leaders and again, trying to not allow what we know happened <laughs> At, but at that historical moment, trying to prevent that from happening. And, you know, the, the, the sad thing is when we talk about uh, the lead up into uh, the elections, we talk about the, the we'll talk about more about the elections and the lead up to the Korean War and the separation of the two countries. Chomanshik is not a name that comes up. A lot. No, um, I think it only came up in my case because um, I took a grad course with a professor who was really interested particularly in this period and also yeah, yeah. in the uh, lead up to North Korea. So he was really interested in the, the fact that up until relatively late, there were people we would more traditionally associate with the South still keeping that dialogue open. In other words, it wasn't like they suddenly hit August 45 and a month later, yes, the split is happening, but it's a gradual, slow, complicated process. We talked about not too long ago uh, the events that happened in Jeju in the spring exactly. of 1948. Uh, we call it uh, the Jeju Uprising, mm -hmm. Jeju Massacre. There's a number uh, list of uh, names for this particular event. But how did this particular event, again, spring, right, and then sure. May 10th, 1948 is the election, uh, relate to this very uh, election? Yeah, it relates perfectly. We don't need to give it the bigger context, which we went through previously, but specifically, there were on Jeju people who attacked uh, uh, electors who were preparing. So again, very much not that we don't like you individually or personally, but you are a government agent preparing for this thing that is presumably going to divide us. And then more importantly in Cheju, the already suspicions of kind of the Southern leadership. Yeah. So the electors represent forces that people don't like, and I believe electors were actually directly attacked. So this is where then the, the whole accusation that there was a bunch of communists uh, in the area. Coming from the government side that yeah, would be yeah. the South. Yes, absolutely. It all, all links together. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about now. We know that uh, the North has decided not to participate this in this election for, again, uh, clear-cut reasons. And we understand why they wouldn't do this. Then who participated from the South, uh, but also who chose not to participate aside from North Korea and why? Yeah, so I actually can't get into the full diversity of who participates uh, because, I mean, it, but I'll, I'll try to simplify it. Uh, clearly, Lee Seung Man, of course, yeah, and the yeah. party that he is for, but he does not win all of the seats. There are other parties. And so if you were, we had a little more time, we can go into some of the fragments. But I want to get to the more interesting ones, which are the ones who do not participate are people coming out of the earlier Shanghai group that very interestingly oh. you think would, but Kim Gu does not, right, Kim Gu right, right, does right. not. And they both both say very specifically, we don't want any part of this because this is going to produce a split that we don't want. That is interesting because uh, we've 
leading up to this very event, we've talked about uh, the two other big names, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. Uh, Kim Gu. We had an actual uh, separate uh, episode on Kim Gu. And considering those others in the, the Shanghai provisional government, there were such significant names. Precisely. And you would think, and, and there is with Lee Sung Man that uh, spillover from that leading to the formation of the first South Korean government, but then these other key figures seeing this, at least the expressions I've heard is it was not so much that they were feared that they feared Rhee himself, as again, that they were afraid that this election would uh, pr- pr- preclude the possibility of a united peninsula. We should not be holding this election. We should be talking first about keeping us together before we do this. There's also speculations, right? That, you know, we talked about this, yes, that, yes, that the yes. U.S. had kind of, you know, chosen before all of this. And then, and then, and then more importantly, too, as we know now, if we just to anticipate a little bit the results, Lee Sung Man will fairly quickly consolidate yes. power from his initial uh, May 48 electoral victory to what happens in July 48, which is the formal uh, a nomination from the assembly to him being president and someone else being vice president, mm-hmm. he very quickly consolidates a smaller base into a much more, uh, in his opinion, you know, a mandate that he builds on. And I'm sure Kim and uh, Kim Gu, they, they knew everything yeah, that was they, going on. They certainly knew at least the domestic politics that were coming. Absolutely. They anticipated. They're not They're not stupid yet. Now, eventually you said uh, uh, Lee Seung Man is able to consolidate uh, the power. Yes. Um, and that actually eventually becomes the downfall of Lee Seung Man later on where too much power, but right. the results of, what was the electoral results? Like, was it a landslide? No, at least, it was funny, I was glancing at it, uh, different sources just a little while ago, and yeah, it's something like a lot of smaller parties with like one or two percents, but the big one, which is Lee Seung-man, because technically this is still not South Korea, so it's something like the National Association for the Realization, I mean, this is the English version, right, right, but the right. Realization of Independence in Korea, they're like somewhere in the range of 25-30%, but there's another group that's like 16-20%, so no, it is not, at least my reading of it, not a landslide, is more that they are the single largest conglomerate and then once that, again, as you become the assembly, then when they go to um, the July election, which is, okay, now we've got a, a constitutional assembly, uh, then they, those seat members have to choose. Then he gets a much more higher percentage when it's, he's chosen as president. I mean, this is one of those cases where there's so many parties involved. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, and, and the, the, the enormous co- uh, political complexity of the oh, Korean Peninsula at that time. Absolutely. Yeah. But can we also say that because Lee Seung Man uh, is, again, a well-known figure uh, who was part of the original members of the Shanghai provincial government, I mean, he pr- probably would have a whole lot of support from... Oh, yeah. It's, it certainly gives him a visibility and a kind of legitimacy that probably probably trumps that of um, some of the other candidates. I, again, I don't not looking at all of them in detail, but yeah. Let's talk about uh, an interesting thing here. Uh, what kind of items or types of ma- uh, material infrastructure link the yeah. peninsula through um, May th- This is what we were talking about earlier and something you said earlier, and you're right, that the split is already happening early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But reminding you the other side, it is a peninsula that was an integrated unit, so the rail lines are still up and linked, and they will not be split formally until the early stages of the Korean War, which not surprisingly gets them cut off. Um, and most importantly, and I've talked about this with my undergrads all the time and they find this interesting, if you know the way it's laid out, all the electrification is in the hydroelectric rivers along mm-hmm, the north. Mm-hmm. So the north has something like 80 to 85% of the electric producing capacity. Wow. And the north has, of course, all of the chemical capability, which means to produce fertilizer, to process petroleum, which not surprisingly results in the big divide materially that will lead post-Korean War and North Korea to be ahead for the next 20, 25 years. I, you know, I also heard, you know, they were talking about, I mean, obviously... The, the but so, yeah, it's, it's industrial stuff and rail lines are still linked. These, this election will be the beginning of the, the, those links being severed, and I, we, we can talk about that if you'd like. You know, yeah. we, when we talk about... Um, the major downfall of North Korea. Sure. I mean, it, it's, you know, kind of, we have like this uh, unison answer, the, you know, communism, and then, you know, communism was led by dictatorship. And, no, you no, know, no, they, they had a very viable economy yeah, at one point. We, that's right. But the thing is, another argument that was being made, and I find it interesting that they had all these infrastructure that, you know, they had the, the majority of the, the, the energy infrastructures and the, the chemicals sure. and things like that. But what they also said is another main reason for why North Korea really can't develop uh, properly is because of the land that they have. I was just going to say what what they have, and you're absolutely right. Is they had very little of the agricultural development and the food yeah. production. That is where the South 
if that's not the greatest advantage post 53 in the, in the beginning over the long run yeah the north has much more mountainous very little arable land and what they and we now know this too how they were surviving for long term beyond the industrial base was of course they were getting inputs from china and the soviet union yeah, yeah. which stopped with the end of the cold war and problem and then we have the next 30 and years then the, the arduous march yeah. that follows yes. uh, in regards to this following the 1948 elections uh considered again the, the first elections of south korea uh Lee Sung Man uh, is voted in. Um, what would the North Korea do? Okay, this is a great story, and it goes to the thing we were just talking about. And I got to be honest, I don't know if this is literally true, but it often comes up, so I'll pitch it as just kind of a fun story, and you people can handle it as they wish. Um, the election happens. We already just talked about the infrastructure was still connected up during this time. The South is purchasing through the you know the United States through Russia surplus electricity and surplus chemical fertilizer because the South lacks these things. Mm -hmm. um, the North and or the Russians basically says you've had an election. You've clearly indicated that you have a different political priority than us. Right. And famously, in May of 1948, they cut off access to electrical power, so they turn off the lights. I mean, now, I don't know if this is literally true, like they flipped a switch, but they definitely said we are no longer to be providing access to surplus electricity, which is why from the late 40s, well before the Korean War, until the early 1970s, South Korea regularly experienced brownouts. And, and now we have the famous pictures of the opposite, where South Korea has all the surplus and the North is dark. Yeah, oh, yeah, 1948, yeah, yeah. this is when it's the opposite. The, the North definitely is like, you want access to our electricity? No, 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 no. That's, 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 that's a great story. And that's one thing that a lot of people <laughs> don't realize yeah, yeah, yeah. is there was up until maybe a about the late 70s, I would say. I was going to say, mid to late 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Their yeah. estimates vary, but yeah. Park Chung, Park Chung era. North Korea had, you know, much higher GDP. Uh, yeah. They were also known for their education. Uh, Kim Il-sung University actually was yeah, yeah, yeah. a renowned university, right? Uh, things just switch about uh, yeah, yeah. very, very And quickly. they don't really start defaulting on loans and things, and yeah, until the, the mid to late 70s, early 80s. And then, of course, as you said, the famine pops up in the early 90s. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's talk about uh, what happened with the follow-up election uh, this held in July 1948 there was another election yeah this is formally we now have it again the Constitutional Assembly which I guess becomes the National Assembly those seat holders of which Rees party again has the largest chunk but not the entire majority but that election I can't remember the numbers but it's something the numbers are much higher in his favor he gets elected president uh, Ish Young gets vice president. And most interestingly, I don't know where this goes historically, but I couldn't, you know, looking at this stuff earlier, they did, with the North not participating, theoretically hold seats available for North Koreans if they chose at a future date. I, I'll be honest with you. I wonder if that's still in the South Korean constitution, where it's like, if we ever Tong Il will have, we have seats waiting for you. I don't know. But in 48, they did. They how, actually how, left I mean, seats. They actually left seats open for them. How many seats are <laughs> yeah. allocated? Apparently, it was, I think it was equal, apparently, or, or, or some rough distribution according to population. That's yeah. that's well. I mean, again, yeah. we don't know what's going to happen no, if there is. But it, a, but it never it right? never happened at the time. No, right? it we didn't know it happen. didn't happen. But theoretically, they were like, we're making a gesture. You can, if you want to, join in. And, and some people would say that technically, even though there was already the split of the two Koreas, yeah, uh, there was a declaration. Yeah, so this takes us to summer '48, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so we have all, and this kind of solidified that idea, yeah. right? Yeah. And and when you have we've... like the South just having its own independent election that the North doesn't exactly, take place, exactly. That itself is a split. And then we will, yeah. Then we will very shortly thereafter have independence of the South, uh, Hebang of '48, and then the North a month later. So we know the once you declare independence, we've kind of got separate states and sovereignty. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, ask you this now. Yeah, uh, August. Oh yeah, fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nineteen forty-eight. Absolutely. Uh, Hebang, uh, I'm sorry, not Hebang, but also then South Korean independence three years after Hebang. Right, exactly. Uh, so you have uh, the independence celebrations yep. happening. It's it's a special day. Sure. Uh, till this day, we we celebrate. And very this day. many famous pictures of it. Uh, it, the, the weird, the, the uncomfortable thing is, yeah, is that North Korea would also celebrate. Uh, independence. I mean, it was because although I think it's a month later, but yeah, it's a roughly the they, same. They do a weird thing, right? Yeah. Um, so who who attended the the August nineteen forty yeah. independence celebration? There, there are many, but the famous one, and you can easily people who haven't seen this, please Google the pictures. It's held at the GJK building, which is interesting itself, right, right, but right. that's still obviously the Korean government now. But it's Lee Man sitting there, and I don't know if this was the only time he visited, but very prominently, along with John Hodge representing the American military government, MacArthur shows up, and you see the nice picture of Lee Man becoming president. Hodge is 
nearby. And then Douglas MacArthur is clearly there lending his wonderful, you know, mantle of authority in terms of like, you know, now you are, you can become Korean president because I am here. <laughs> and that's, I, and, that, and, that, and that's, very, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that more Koreans aren't um, uncomfortable with that because it is kind of the, the American presence being a little bit overly friendly and a little too familiar. Well, but th- that, that was what caused a lot of controversy. Yeah, right? why was he there? And yeah, 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 because even, for instance, I, I think the argument that the, the communists, those, uh, the North Koreans, uh, not everyone in North Korea at the time were had communist be- uh, beliefs, which is why they left even before. Yeah, sure. And people are still going across the, yeah. But the... People who are pushing for Korea to be communist, the argument that was being made is, listen, I mean, we just ended the colonialism of Japan. You can't have U.S. meddling yeah, in our stuff um, once again. Right. Different labels in English, but right. Some version of American imperialism, American puppetry. But yes, yeah, so you're allowing yourself to be orchestrated. So that was like one of the arguments yeah, that, that was that being used. That accusation is still probably out here. Well, it's certainly South Korean students in the 80s would say that sometimes. Right. Exactly. And, and get so, accused of being communist. Yeah. And... You put it very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It still leads into a yeah, it's still, lead, it's a still It still makes people nervous in South Korea. But yes, the, the language has been out there for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Isengman will largely let now, you know, obviously considered, uh, you know, a symbol of, uh, you know, the first con- conservative uh, leadership uh, in, in South Korea yeah, and so yeah, yeah, forth. Yeah. And uh, even with the, the recent movie that came out, there was a lot of controversies in regard to that as well. Professor Demoya, as always, thank you very much for your history lessons today. Uh, have a safe rest of your week and looking forward to our next class next week. Thanks very much. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.